Kaiser and Paul Munko announce a mini Mystic. I get a Worksharp field uh, sharpener and folders I'd trust with my life. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. One of my favorite comments this past week was from the great and powerful Dion Page. Thank you, Dion. Uh, this was on the, uh, he says, Dave is the man. OG Blades equals OG Badass. And that I cannot disagree with. Of course, we're talking about uh, Dave of OG Blade Reviews. He sent me a giant box of 21 folders to give away on Thursday Night Knives. And uh, Dion was commenting on that video. A lot of people commented similarly. Um, uh, Pete Davidson said the generosity from your peers speaks volumes about your character, dedication, and commitment to the community. Thanks, Bob, Jim, and all your supporters for your honesty and making everyone who visits your channel feel welcome and included. Well, I guess I just dropped that in there because it made me feel good. It was a little <laughs> compliment to me and Jim, but, uh, thanks Pete. Uh, also a, a frequent contributor. I appreciate it, sir. And I appreciate all of you who watched the videos and commented, uh, over this past week. Um, thanks very much. All right, that said, let's get to a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Let's find out. Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. Been carrying this quite a bit and feeling like a fancy, fancy man. Uh, this is the Herman Knives Ishtar. And uh, this was one that they sent to me. I think they've been on a little bit of a marketing blitz. I've been seeing a lot of people not a lot of people, but a number of our trusted voices getting this, uh, getting knives from Herman Knives. And I was just surprised that I was included in that bunch because it's a bunch of fine fellows like Metal Complex and Jared Neve and people who have giant channels and who really do focus on uh, the ins and outs of, of uh, different knives and how they're built. You know, me, I operate more on, uh, well, I, I, I'm a little bit different here and I'm, I'm happy they recognized uh, that we also appreciate Fine, fine cutlery. This amazing, I call it gravel road texturing on that titanium is really nice in the hand and uh, very easy on the eyes. And then you have this beautiful M390 upswept uh, Persian blade there. And it is wickedly thin and sharp. Uh, after about two weeks of obsessively, of obsessively flipping this, it started to develop this weird... Um, lock stick and i realized uh they did not put any loctite on the uh, pivot and it backed out a little bit and they they give you a t20 torx wrench uh, in the box and so i tightened it down uh, real tight and it has been butter smooth ever since and i gotta say uh, i like when they don't put um what do you call it the the thread locker on pivots uh they meaning like chris reeve knives uh, i think they don't they don't put any of that stuff in there i i like that it it just makes it easier to adjust or in this case uh to tighten down uh, you say yes but if there was thread locker it never would have backed out in the first place that may be true but i like knowing that it's nice and clean in there um like with my chris reeve knives uh to my two knives i've never needed any sort of red locker in there so anyway i love this herman knives knife a lot i gotta stop saying anyway because it reminds me of someone anyway uh this there's a very beautiful blade that they uh also serve up that looks like this except with a little bit of a clip at the tip like that and oh man that's a nice looking knife too i'm not sure if it's in the ishtar line or if it's a totally different model but uh, lots of beautiful stuff from the polish uh, company Herman Knives. Very, very cool stuff. And you can get, get them through um, PolishCustomKnives.com. Mm. Next on me today wasn't a slip joint, but it was in the same spirit. And that is the Benny. I had the Benny on me. I've been carrying this thing a lot. Actually, these two I've been carrying quite a bit. They're both fancy. They're, they're both uh, really, really well made. And they're both fun to to have on and to play with and to fidget with. Uh, but then when it comes time to cut, they're amazing at that too. Uh, the Ishtar I used to prepare a salad uh, this past weekend. It's what I had in my pocket and my wife was using the new Steve Kalari 
a custom knife. So I was like, well, if I can't use that, I'm going to use this. Uh, not that we don't have uh, three Steve Kalari custom knives here, but I wanted to use something new and uh, full flat ground, and this thing worked great. Uh, this I've been using for pencils a lot. I've been uh, doodling a lot, drawing a lot, and uh, using knives always to sharpen my pencils. It's one of the best excuses to have a knife on you, uh, especially if you're, you know, in a drawing mode. So th that's what this has been going to mostly. And this is an excellent pencil sharpener. No one ever talks about that, but, uh, um, you know, when we're doing our testing and we, the royal we, I don't really do any testing, but uh, when friends of ours do testing, you never see them sharpen a pencil. Um, it is a, a common job and uh, with certain grinds you can really really make it fun and make the pencil just look like it came out of a legit sharpener but this of course with the mars valley carbon fiber uh, one of my few jack wolf knives in carbon fiber and probably my only carbon fiber jack wolf knife that isn't black or blue so a nice warm tone here i really like this uh, knife probably um i guess in the top three of jack wolf knives releases all day long. All right, next up on me, I had the um, TKL Knives Agent 001. I had this one. I have two. I have three 001s. One of them is single edged, which uh, I love, but gets no carry, and then um, or very little carry. And then I have the two uh, double edged ones. This one with the Woodland uh, Burl Carbon Fiber or uh, Woodland Burl G10 lives in the vertical sheath so this is the one that rides at uh, three o'clock or i guess i could put it appendix but uh as it's summer i'm not doing too much appendix carry and um so so this one is in this sheath i wanted to carry this way so i carried this knife uh the the purple handled one is kind of my main agent that's the one that sits right up by my bu belt buckle uh horizontally that's got the purple burl and since it gets a lot more play it's getting dark and really nice looking great knife this has actually been a, a good pool knife for me this year i know several weeks back i had a, a pool knife thing and they were all a pool knife episode and they were all small thin light folders but i've been carrying this one a lot it goes nicely in the bathing suit and then when you jump in you just pull it out give it to your wife and jump in uh because my wife never goes in uh, so that is the uh, Agent 001. Of course, I love that knife. And just a, a little footnote, uh, the 002, based on the handle design that um, that Tim and I came up with, um, he's got the second blade coming out. This is the Agent 002. You can reserve this. And the Agent 003, which has a Night Stalker blade on the same handle. Those are available for order, for reservation, they're calling it right now. And then also a beautiful, and I have to get on this this list. I haven't yet, but the a beautiful Warncliffe version of the combatant, and it's got a separate name, and I can't remember what it is. But uh, Tkel always always crushing. All right, uh, lastly, I'm for emotional support inspired by last Thursday night. I've been carrying this quite a bit. Uh, this is the Mini RSK Mark One by uh, Doug Ritter and. Hogue, and it's just a great knife. Great bar lock on this knife, great action, great ergonomics, and an awesome uh, 20 CV blade. Very colorful uh, crew here for me. Um, man, if I had the purple handled uh, T Kel, it'd be, it'd be all color. But this is what I had on me today. Let me know what you had on you. I had the green anodized Herman Ishtar. I had the lava, or no, I'm sorry, the Mars Valley version of the Benny. I had TKL Knives Double Edge uh, Agent 001, and of course the RSK Mini RSK Mark I. Uh, what did you have on you? Let me know. Drop it in the comments below. Always interesting to me to find that out. Uh, I always talk about the knives from TKL, but I, I have to remind you the sheaths, with one exception, the sheaths are outstanding. And I, when I say one exception, I mean one exception in the world, not like design-wise. My uh, my Karambit, my FLN model, I want it to be a little bit harder to tug it out. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm I'm setting out. I've just found the heat gun. I'm setting out to pinch that, and then it'll be perfect. Love those TKL knives. All right. Next up, uh, speaking of knives, I love and have had a hand in designing. Uh, the Nova 2 is uh, pre-order is open. This is my custom collaboration 
uh, with um, Matt Chase. Let me turn this down a little bit so it doesn't flare up. Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives. And uh, he and I worked on the Nova One together. And of course, you know, I show off his knives all the time. I love his work. Uh, this is based on his EDC Tonto, meaning it's the handle and the front guard that comes from the Tonto. Uh, but like the Nova One, I designed the blade for this, the Nova Two, and uh, we're putting it out there for all of you knife junkies uh, who are interested in uh, for a limited time. Uh, this will be up. I'm going to leave this pre-order open through August, my birth month, and then we'll close it up. Uh, I know it takes time to buy something like, like this. It's expensive. It's handmade in Massachusetts, um, but it is worth the wait saving up, and it's worth the wait waiting for it to be done and in your hot little hands. Uh, so this is the Nova 2, a Yojim, not a Yojimbo, a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Oh my gosh, what's it called? Okay, all right. Let me know. I know you're typing now. Uh, it's the Japanese utility blade that I love so much. Um, nice jimping, ivory G10 handle, red liners, and that beautiful acid stonewash deep hollow ground blade there. So pre-order is open for this. Go to store.thenifejunkie.com to check it out and to get on that pre-order. Uh, here's a little note if you're interested. We're doing a different thing with the serial numbers this time instead of uh say we have 20 of them ordered instead of having one two three four five out of 20 you can pick whatever number you want uh my brother is a is a tax nerd so he's he's putting the number of his favorite tax code i think it's 513 so if it's 20 it'll be 513 out of 20. obviously uh, uh not logical or mathematical but fun and interesting and personalized. So let me know uh, if you're interested in that aspect and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, that is the Nova 2 and can't wait to get it in your hands and in your belt. This, by the way, has actually uh, been a surprise this summer. I've been carrying this a lot. I get a little fussy about my fixed blade knives in the summer. This one is working really well in the waistband because of that short and nicely rounded handle. So love this thing. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for checking that out. And uh, I got some other stuff to check out. It's uh, Knife Life News coming up. But before we get there, uh, I want to remind you that we have a Patreon membership here. And uh, yeah, it helps us keep the lights on and helps us uh, pay for the services we need here at the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, but it also offers you a thing or two um, in in uh, access to um exclusive interviews so i interview people every week you get uh, extra interviews and you get entered in uh, to win a monthly knife on thursday night knives uh, we give away a lot of knives now on thursday night knives the the um the gentleman junkie knife giveaway knife is always of a slightly higher caliber so um, you do get something out of it. Go check it out. Uh, you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon and sign up, or you can scan the QR code on your screen. I will repeat that very complicated address. It's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super sharp crenulated bezel, and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch. The KnifeJunkie.com slash Shockwave. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. One of my absolute favorite knives from 2023 was the Paul Munko designed Kaiser Mystic. Uh, a knife, my only knife with Rex 45 steel, which I've come to really love. Uh, I liked it initially for its aesthetic value. It it um, it patinas, and that's part of why he put it on the Mystic, he being Paul Munko. Uh, Paul Munko comes from Connecticut. Mystic is a very famous port city in Connecticut where they build ships and also had a huge whaling industry, and this is based on that whaling, uh, that historical whaling industry, the Mystic is. It's got a beautiful kind of harpoon uh, clip point blade, and the original had a it was a titanium bolster lock with green micarta. Well, 
Kaiser and Paul Monko have announced this, and this won't be out. Uh, this will be out by year's end, so don't get too excited yet. But look at this thing. It is a mini Mystic taking the 3.75 inch blade to 3.25 inches. They still have not announced the steel. I hope they stick with Rex 45 because it's just cool. Now, if they're doing it with that coating, um, it would it would nullify half of the coolness of Rex 45. That is the patina, but it would also protect the steel and you know, uh, only add to its toughness and hardness. Well, maybe not toughness, but hardness. Uh, so the, the mini mystic will have Ultim bolsters with a different lock. It's not a bolster lock this time. As you can see, it's their clutch lock. That's their crossbar lock. Um, and then uh, black burlap micarta for the rest of the handle. I got to say, it's very handsome. It's a fetching uh, looking knife, even with the Ultim. And you know, I'm I thought I liked Ultim, and then I got the Jack Wolf Knives uh, Pioneer Jack and Ultim. And though I love the knife, yeah, I agree. It looks like urine. And and I am a fan of uh, different kinds of dark yellows. I love ochre and uh, all of the all of those fall colors. But Ultim just looks too much like you you walked into a stadium bathroom, you know, a little bit. Uh, but on this one, it looks nice. It looks nice next to black here and. Um, and maybe the tone of it is a little more amber than that yellow color. But anyway, I'm 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 getting in the weeds. Uh, I think this is going to be a really cool one because the Mystic is is a really excellent knife. It's it's somewhat coveted. Uh, I know a lot of people after I got mine were wanting them and they were in short supply. I think they came out in a couple of bursts. So this at the 3.25 inch blade, which is the the magical mean for most people for EDC, and uh, the clutch lock, which makes it more fidgety. This thing's gonna jump off the shelves. So uh, look forward to that. Look at how beautiful that blade is. I mean, that is a really really nice. It looks like a piece of whaling kit, which I love. All right, uh, so that is the Kaiser Mini Mystic. Um, look out for Paul Monko. His designs are so cool, and he happens to be a very cool and nice dude all right next up is from giant mouse so giant mouse the uh the knife company by jens anzo and jesper voxnes two danish dudes uh of repute who design amazing knives come together and uh you know they have this giant mouse line well they have or this giant mouse company they have the ace line which is kind of a more slightly more I thought it was slightly more affordable this to me does not look like a slightly more affordable build because uh, what it does look like to me is a Tom Mayo knife. This does not remind me of a Jen Zanzo or a Jesper Voxnes. If I had no idea, I would think that was a Tom Mayo. Um, but it's a beautiful knife nonetheless. It's a full tie frame lock. That's why that's why it seems like it might not be uh, you know, more budget friendly. 3.5 inch, basically trailing edge, depending on where you measure it from. Uh, whether it's from the very, very base of the Ricasso or the very tip of the forward bit of the handle. I think it varies uh, by about a quarter inch there. MagnaCut blade, uh, that beautiful trailing point, um, kind of Persian-y blade. And um, they're expecting this out early August. I I do not have any giant mouse knives. Um, I know that they're manufactured, I think, in Italy, mostly in Italy. Um, I do not have any. I've experienced a few just that like held others at Blade Show. And they're pretty cool. This one uh, to me looks really nice. But again, I, I don't know if it's just my eye today, but it looks pretty derivative. It doesn't look like their stuff to me that much. But anyway, uh, that's it. The Bleaker. Bleaker, I don't know, named after Bleaker Street in New York. One of the coolest streets, if you will, uh, uh, in the on the, you know, on the lower, it's not on the lower east. Well, I guess some of it's on the lower east side, but uh, some of the best pizza in the world, John's Pizza, used to be on Bleecker Street. I'm not sure if they're still there. And uh, lots of cool stuff on Bleecker Street. So hopefully the giant mouse uh, Bleecker does it for you. That, by the way, is a reversible deep carry wire pocket clip. That seems to be their uh, bread and butter with the clips. Next up, uh, a knife that I'll admit it. I really like this version a lot, and I, I'm generally pretty cold with it. The Benchmade 940, the unassailable Benchmade 940, is out in a new special variant, but it's not a special release. Limited numbers, but it's not a special release. I don't know. You figure it out. Uh, but instead of the uh, satin blade of S um, S30V and the green anodized 
aluminum handle. This is in their burnt copper uh, offerings. And I think that this burnt copper line is only on the Warren Osborne design knives. And those are some of the most successful knives they've ever uh, released. Uh, you know, I'm not a huge fan of this knife, uh, but I got to say, I like the smaller version better just by looks. And with this burnt copper and um, acid stone tumbled, whatever you want to call it, magna cut, this to me is the 940. Like if I were to say get a 940 for the collection, just for the wholeness of the collection, this is this is the one I would get. Um, very much like the look of this, but uh, besides the battle wash magna cut uh, blade and the burnt copper, this is a 940 and a nine. What is that? 945. I think the little one is called. So keep your eyes peeled. Uh, this one is uh, I think this is out now. It's not in my notes. I believe this one is out. So go go to Benchmade and uh, Benchmade.com to, to get it and check it out. Burnt copper. Who thought? Who would have known? It's a it's a beautiful color, though, especially next to the black. All right. Last up in Knife Life news, uh, this kind of thing has been getting a lot more press and I, I have yet to come around. Um, and that's because I don't use the knives I have enough to get one of these replaceable blade, um, you know, utility knives. They're cool for I, I bet. Uh, for guys who are opening boxes all day long for work, you want something like this because uh, you don't want to go home every night and sharpen your blades. But uh, or maybe you're not even allowed to have a knife on the job and it has to be something uh, small like this. But this is called the Cut Weasel by Boker Plus, and it's one of the modern knife enthusiast friendly replaceable blade utility knives on the market. Just kind of another one. Uh, this one has a steel frame and that piece on top that slides and locks the blade in, slides it forward, is a is a G10. And then on the reverse side, it's got a big pocket clip that looks like a money clip. You could use it as a money clip. And it's as light as 1.38 ounces. So I, hey, and that's a replaceable blade we all know and love, and we can go source pretty much anywhere. Um, so a, a valuable tool, no doubt. I just, it just hasn't captured my imagination. Kind of like, kind of like, uh, flashlights for me you know i know and like them and i have a few that are pretty sweet but that'll do it for me um i don't i don't feel that way about knives um so uh keep your eyes peeled for the boker cut weasel by the way this is a uh collaboration with designer ben logan of the turnback knife company and it's it's a a very very close approximation to a custom version of that um cut weasel uh, that he does all right. Well, uh, that's all I know about new knives coming out this week. Go check them out. Uh, I get a lot of my information from Knife News. I love uh, Ben Schwartz. He's the writer there. He can take the most mundane knife details and make them interesting. So go over, check out uh, Knife News, if you will. All right. Uh, we're going to get to the state of the collection in a moment, but just be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, that lets you know when new videos are uploaded. Share the show with a friend if you think there's someone uh, crazy enough in your circle who uh, likes uh, blather about knives, send that to them. And also, you can download this to your favorite podcast app. Mine, I listen to Apple Podcasts mostly these days. I think that's due out of laziness. I used to be on Stitcher a lot, and then I don't know. But you can listen to it on all of these. Please, please do so. All right, coming up, we're going to check out my new workshop field sharpener in the state of the collection. The Freedom Ringer is back. You bought out the first shipment, so knives ship free, just restocked their exclusive Freedom Ringer from RMJ Tactical. This solid 24-inch maple bat has a finely detailed engraving and is made in Tennessee, USA. Get the Freedom Ringer and other great knife specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I love that RMJ Freedom Ringer baseball bat. Makes you want to go commie bashing. I love that. Uh, of course, I'm joking about the commies. They can, they can. All right, moving on. Let's see right here. Uh, this is the only thing I got this week of note, and it is awesome. I got this as a recommendation from Jared Neve. Uh, he put out a video or a short on this. Um, 
uh, this is the work sharp field uh, sharpener and it, it it's really sweet i i think this is quickly becoming my um my everyday sharpener it's sort of replacing my spider my it's not replacing it'll never replace the spider coast stone uh, but it's more of a go-to because you have more options here um, so you have on both sides you have diamond plates this is a coarse diamond plate or rel it's like a medium diamond plate and this is a fine diamond plate by the way these are removable and then there's whole bunch of stuff in here I haven't figured out how to use yet, but um, this removes also. And then you've got a little uh, crayon in there, I think, for marking your edge. I just real I just noticed that right this second. So um, and then you have on top this this great rotating um, ceramic rod. This is fine. See, so you have fine, coarse and hook. So if you need to sharpen a fish hook, you you rotate it this way. And you have a sort of peaked ridge here that you can sharpen your hooks on. Or you have the fine. Or you have the coarse. And then up here, uh, it's a, a smaller bit of ceramic that fits most serrations. Um, and then on the back, you got a strop. So when you're done with the ceramic and you're done, well, you're done with the, um, the diamond stone, you can go to the ceramic and the different ceramics, and then finally you finish it off and knock off that burr with the strop. Uh, it's small, relatively inexpensive. I think this was $24, $24 or $34. It was something four, and I know it wasn't $44. So it was either $34 or $24 on Amazon. How's that? How's that for, uh, for useful information? But uh, it was inexpensive uh, to me, and so... Uh, I got it and I really like it. It could replace most of your stuff or not replace it, but be the thing you use the most. Um, the uh, Something I like about it a lot is that all of the approaches. So he, this, this black plastic approach to the, uh, to the ceramic rods or these yellow plastic rubber approaches to these diamond steels, or even to, no, not to the strop, are, are placed at 20 degrees. So if you rest it, if you rest the blade on that end and then just drag it across, you're going to get a guaranteed 20 degree edge unless unless in that short span you, you alter the angle. But I, I really, really like that. It keeps you honest with your angles. And uh, it's put a wicked, wicked edge on this uh, very mediocre edged, uh, but cool and nice uh, case. Love this case knife. Um, but it had a real, it came with a really lame edge. I've gotten a lot of cases with lame edges lately um, or in the past year and a half. And this thing took care of it, no problem. So I highly recommend uh, that this work sharp field sharpener and, uh, yeah, I want to get more of their stuff now. Uh, I just want like a straight rod, something like that would be would be cool to have. Uh, but it's always good to have a field sharpener. It's always good to have the diamond stone to bring an edge back and then a progressively finer ceramic to refine the edge. And then you got that strop. You're good to go. Okay, uh, now we're going to get to folders I would trust with my life. Um, and... Okay, I'll tell you how I came up with this with this um, category. Uh, I I went downtown DC uh, with some friends over the weekend, and it was to see a um, Star Wars burlesque show for a friend's birthday. And uh, it was fun. Uh, what was most fun was being with my friends downtown. Um, the The show was also pretty good. We had an awesome dinner, uh, but I was totally unknived. I had nothing on me, not even a pen, not even like a pen that I could stab in someone's eye. So I was totally unarmed because I knew after dinner we were going to a, a place where they were going to wand you down. Every place you go, any public like uh, performance space you go to in D.C., you're walking through metal detectors. I've learned that the hard way. That's how I lost my hinderer pen, my investigator pen. I gave it to the lady who who made me. She's like, you got to throw that out. I'm like, I'm not throwing it out you have it. She's like, really? And I'm like, don't give me really doe eyes. Uh, we think I'm just going to throw it out. Just take it, you know, use it against someone. Okay. Uh, 
so I'm sitting there thinking, wow, we're, this is an interesting uh, burlesque show, all Star Wars theme. This is awesome. But what if someone came in here and challenged me to a knife duel? How would I handle this? Or what if I had to cut a zip tie right now? What would I do? I'd have to go find the stage hand and use his uh, his replaceable blade utility knife. So it made me think, like, what are the folders I have uh, that I that are easy to carry? This I was taking this out of the giant cold steel realm and into easy knives to carry that you that I feel 100 percent secure with. Like if I had a fighting situation, no problem. If I had a survival situation, no problem. And and. Thankfully, that never comes up, either of those, <laughs> but I'd be in good stead if I did. The first thing that came to mind is, is one of the ones that I will never get rid of, and that is the Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza, in my case, the 21. 21, this was the, uh, the, the redesign of the original Sabenza for its 21st year in production, and then 10 years later, they did the 31. A lot of people, a lot of you might have the 31 where they made some changes where they took some things about the umnums on like the, the uh, um, ceramic ball interface and stuff. And they, they uh, did some, some alterations, but this to me is a, is the, Hmm. What do I want to call this? This is kind of the standard uh, in terms of solid, knives that you could count on a hundred percent because uh, the way it's built it's got it's only put together in these three places the stop pin which is huge uh the the pivot which is nice and chunky and then this back barrel which is also nice and big uh the tolerances are all uh, very notoriously that's not the right word are famously tight so everything fits together really 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 nicely and tightly when you if you've ever taken apart a sabenza you know what i mean um, when you loosen these screws and lift it up you have to lift it up exactly or it won't move because the tolerances are so tight um you know there's no wiggle room between the screws and the and the holes they sit in it is they are exact um and that gives this whole thing a a an incredibly solid and rigid feel. Um, no weight lightening in that titanium, so you feel the full solidness of those slabs. And then with the way they're put together, I feel like this, uh, along with a couple of other knives that you'll see in this list, um, make this knife perfect. It, it really is excellent. Before I ever had a Chris Reeve knife Sabenza, I was kind of like, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? What's the big deal? Uh, but if you have trusted voices out there and they are saying it's awesome, it's not just because other people are saying it's awesome. It really is amazing. And and I would like to try the 31. Um, but I got to say, I like the inlays. I like the look of this one better. I know I, I'm superficial. I like. Uh, but to get a 31 with some nice wood inlays would not be the worst thing in the world. So this is basically setting the bar. Um and and then you'll see another light knife down the row that picks it up where this one leaves off. All right, second one is designed by one of my favorite people in knives, period, Ernest Emerson, and made by one of my former favorite companies, and that's Zero Tolerance. I say former favorite because it's like, what have you done for me recently, ZT? They've, they've kind of really, really, really radically slowed down. They were never a huge uh, production outfit anyway. I mean. They were large on the production side, but not on the, you know, they didn't have a million models like Kershaw did, uh, does, but they really slowed down from there. I think they released one new knife in the past couple of years and then, a, and then a bunch of redos on, on, uh, older knives. This one is based on, uh, an old, uh, Emerson design, well, pre-wave and it's a from his Specwar series. And I love this one because it matches that really simple design. It reminds me a bit of the Sabenza, that really simple design with a very um, practical, uh, but nice looking clip point blade and in an incredible frame uh, that with this is a frame lock that's got uh, overlays. So really you get the benefit, the strength of a frame lock. Um, but without the hassle of of depressing the bar with your with your offside fingers. This one, by the way, is also uh, 20 CV and an incidental front flipper 
like many Ernest Emerson designs, you can front flip them because that sort of tang protrudes. Um, so this was this was a front flipper before front flipping was cool. Uh, one thing about this knife is that it came with um, sp split pea soup carbon fiber, this kind of ugly green carbon fiber that everyone dished down. I didn't mind it, uh, but I minded it enough, or I liked this knife enough that I wanted a material I really like. So I got some sort of blonde micarta for it and um, and a deep carry MXG gear pocket clip. All right, next up, you see this knife a lot. This is my go-to um, car knife. This is my road trip knife. It's actually dirty from the last from the last little trip. I got to clean that off a little bit. But uh, this is the one that always rides in my pocket when I drive somewhere more than an hour away. Uh, that's basically my, my cutoff point. Why, you say? Why are you such a superstitious dolt? Uh, well, because th this is a... This had a lot of firsts for me. This was my first S35EN, my first Microtech, my first uh, blade on bearings, didn't even realize it at the time. First knife with a glass breaker, first first knife with carbon fiber. Uh, got it used from a gentleman in California who was building a house and had to sell his knife collection, apparently. And uh, I've always, always loved this knife. Uh, so because of that glass breaker, it rides with me in cars, even though I now have plenty of other knives with glass breakers. This is just the one. So when I load the family up and we take off, this is the one that goes in my pocket. It, if you want to see how this knife performs, there are some great videos by a, a gentleman named D-Ring on, on YouTube. He does a gun channel, but he's also affiliated somehow with Microtech. I think he works for them. I see, I see him at the shows and stuff. Uh, and he does some torture testing of this and the LUDT and a couple of other um microtech knives and they are astoundingly robust uh, you should see what he he does to this knife um so definitely check it out that that is a um that goes a long way uh, to putting this in that category for me because i haven't done all that stuff with this knife seeing someone else do it and knowing that this is a you know a representation of the knife he's doing it with it just makes me feel better um, but this knife has done everything. It's cut everything because of that roll. You know, it's it's opened oil cans or oil, not cans, but the foil on the oil things, uh, oil bottles. And it's also cut like a million waffles and and pancakes and stuff. So it's done all sorts of duty. I love this knife. It's never leaving the collection. All right. Next up, uh, this one is an off grid knife. This is the off grid knives enforcer. This one is the. Red Dawn edition, as is evident by the red and black G10. Very nice G10. Not this one, but my other one of this that's all black with D2. This has 154 CM blade steel. It used to ride in my car for, um, well, for a couple of years before it was replaced by a different off-grid, uh, an off-grid rescue uh, rapid strike. Uh, but the reason I had this one in the car door, or the 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 D2 version, is that look at that. It looks like a uh, a water tower in New York City, uh, on top of an apartment building. But that water tower is actually a glass breaker, noggin knocker, um, attitude adjuster, or what have you. And this uh, big four inch Warncliffe blade is also super. Super good to go. It's it's very, very thin when it comes to cutting. It cuts uh, cardboard great, all the off-grid knives do. And even this saber grind is uh, really, really excellent, uh, but also very robust. This is not a shrinking violet uh, of a knife. And the size, the gription on the handle, it's got these raised pyramids that are pretty aggressive. Um this so the traction plan is nothing fancy would call it the fact that it's got a, a finger guard for forward motion it's got this amazing uh, glass breaker back here a very good, nice big handle to hold on to and quite a robust liner lock um yeah this is definitely on that list of folders i would trust my life with and and if i'm keeping it in the car that's basically what i'm saying and and so having this in there um I have never actually used a knife to save my life, um, but uh, if I ever do, these are the knives that uh, 
I hope I have on me. But again, as they say, it's whatever you have on you. And it might just be a keychain knife. You know, it might just be a little um, classic SD Victorinox. But hopefully it's not. It's hopefully it's one of these. All right. Next up is the Spyderco Yojumbo. I really vacillated between this and the Yojimbo, but ultimately landed on the Yojumbo due, just due to its size. Um, the the 3.25 inch, the smaller size of the Yo, Yo Jum, uh, Yojimbo was also a factor that, uh, you know, that's what I was balancing. I'm like, you, actually, the 3.25, it's easier to carry. It might be more likely to be on you. Um, and I was thinking about that, but in my specific terms no i'm more likely to have the larger knife so um it's it could be this or it could be the the yojimbo it's kind of personal preference but a lot of it has to do with this compression lock uh, a lot of why i'm talking about these knives in general is that they lock up so tight so well and are um you know most likely the failure if there's a failure will not be with the lock and that's that's the case with the spider coat compression lock it's it's like it's I it's like nothing else. I hear people uh, call it like a a uh, a liner lock on top, but really, it's like a liner lock. But instead of a liner lock, which which uh, you have the tang here and you have the liner lock, and it slides over, and then you're locked up. This one has a slot, so it not only slides over, but it locks in the slot. So in order for this to fail, you would have to shear. Uh, a, a a piece of this lock a uh, piece of this steel out of the pocket it sits in on the tank it's just not going to happen i mean i think before that happens uh the g10 might go or the or the blade will break or something but it's got a super super strong lock and not for nothing if you're uh if you're in a survival situation and you need to uh fidget your way to sanity this would be a good one uh, but uh, survival situation is not what this is about because that's a pretty thin hollow ground uh, blade with a very kind of dainty point. This is more of a self-defense knife, let's say. Uh, so I would count, I would rely on this to save my life in that sort of situation. Not that it's the knife that will save my life. You get it. But um, S30V, I love S30V steel still, uh, even though it's so old and so done. Uh, but a lot of people still using it. Benchmade, Spyderco, uh, chief among them. And they're still still a great blade steel. So uh, this also, I took off the center uh, partition that separates your fingers. Just uh, didn't care for that too much. Um, and I've seen people alter the handle quite a bit on this. Uh, MXG gear clip for deep carry. Uh, this ships with a large, shiny Spyderco clip. I don't like shiny clips at all these days i just want muted i don't need anyone up in my business and uh the shiny clips just draw more attention oh you have a knife yes all right next up uh emerson i mentioned him before um but i also have a nice collection of emerson knives and of them they're all stout sturdy and good to go but of them i think this super cq c uh, seven is just the one it is so solid and it's got a very large neutral handle. I almost don't like the blade to handle ratio on this one, almost. Um, but the handle is so good. It's large and neutral. And it, it really is like from here to here, uh, from spine to belly, it's a tall handle. And so it really feels secure in hand. It's not gonna twist. It's not gonna turn when you're trying to do uh, hard stuff with this. Uh, it's a chisel ground, meaning on one side, full chisel ground blade, meaning one side is totally flat. The other side has the bevels and the chisel edge. This thing is wickedly sharp. I know you look at that and you think, how could it be sharp? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm giving you the dumb guy voice my wife uses. I will I will do it differently. How, Bob, how Robert, how could it be sharp if it's if it's flat on one side? It, it It's counterintuitive, but if you've ever used a chisel, uh, that's the that's the concept behind it. Instead of instead of having your edge and cross section like this, your edge and cross section is like this. So it's half half of it is there, but you still have the full beef of the full thickness of this blade not that far up. 
So yeah, maybe not the most efficient slicer of Swiss cheese, but an excellent cutter and um, and piercer and thruster. And this knife in particular, or maybe it was just the regular seven, was one that our good friend um, uh, Edwin used to help rescue people when when his local area was flooded. And uh, that's that's how he got his love for the Emerson knives. How stir how sturdy and stout and sharp and usable they were they do lack some fit and finish for some people some people don't like that you can some sometimes see machine machine work and stuff on there um doesn't bother me like like right here next to the jimping you can see a little machine chatter if i can get it to focus not a big deal but that's the thing about uh, emerson knives they are they are rough and ready and they're not um dainty and or not even dainty. They're not overdone with the fanciness because they're they're supposed to be used to pry people out of cars and that kind of stuff. All right, next up, uh, a knife that would be great at that and was probably invented for something similar is the Rick Hinderer Knives XM24. Uh, you could go with the 18. I like the 24 due to the size. Rick Hinderer used to be uh, he used to do stuff with horses, but also he was a firefighter. And I know he did a lot of the designing of the XM models uh, while he was doing firefighting still. And he came up with the um, over travel stop on the on the lock bars because in tense situations, he had he had apparently overextended the lock when closing it, uh, when closing a knife on a fire call or whatever. And it bent the. Uh, bent the leafing lock out and then there was no detent and it rendered it useless basically so he created the over travel stop which is ubiquitous now uh, across the board whether it's done like this or whether it's uh, attached to the now ubiquitous um, stainless steel uh, insert in the lock bar uh, a lot of the times this technology is just integrated into that technology this thing is super sturdy. I was talking about the Sabenza being one of the um, one of the benchmarks for sturdiness. Basically, this is the other. To me, uh, I look at this and I see those super wide standoffs. You could roll that. You could roll over this with a truck, no problem. I would imagine. <laughs> I'm not going to, uh, but this would not receive any damage. It's you've got again tight tolerances here in the pivot. And and also in all of the drilling. So uh, when you're sticking these standoffs, when, when you take this apart and you're putting the standoffs back in the titanium housing uh, cup, it fits perfectly. There's not a, a hint of play. Everything is like that. So again, this is one of those knives when you take it off, when you um, disassemble it and you take off the top, you have to do it exactly perfect. Everything has to be coming up at a perfect level. Otherwise, it won't move because the tolerances are so... So perfect. So that adds to the rigidity of the knife. Of course, this is a big knife. It's thick. It's like 0.6 inches thick. It's got a really thick slab of titanium on the lock side and then a thin titanium uh, liner on the on the show side. It's just built for action. It's so tough. Or um, not tough, but you know what I mean? Uh, robust uh, toughness. I can't speak to because I've never really hammered this through a through a uh, a um, stump or anything like that. M390 blade steel. And of course, that is one of the most beautiful Warncliffs ever. I love his Warncliffs. They are similar to the Kiridashi. That's the word I was looking for before here. Uh, this, this knife actually was a huge inspiration for that blade. Um, that upward angled uh, edge, the extreme tip. So uh, I love this knife, but I also have it in the in the buoy, and I've seen it in uh, other blades, the uh, other blade shapes. The point is the frame and the and the and the format. The XM format is so durable. Um, yeah, I would definitely trust my life to this one. All right, the next two are are also by the same designer. The first one is the AD20. Uh, by Demco Knives. The AD20 is a super uh, sturdy, thick, chunky, robust uh, little buddy here. Uh, again, we're seeing super thick, uh, stout standoffs, squat, stout standoffs. 
Uh, and so that means a lot more surface area on both sides of the knife making contact. And then with the, again, perfect tolerances, meaning the barrels fit perfectly in the holes without any play, tighten those all down and it is a rock. And then you add the whole block here that is the shark lock mechanism. And if you look down in there, you can see it's that all adds to the rigidity and it's all uh, based around that big pivot. So this knife uh, to me is really up there for, um, well, I don't want to say it usurped the triad lock, but I feel as confident with this lock as I do the triad. Um, I think part of it is because Andrew Demko has explained this lock uh, to us and and others so many times it just makes incredible sense um and also there's there's a, a reinforcement that happens if you put your thumb there uh that kind of happens with a frame lock and and with other uh, like the scorpion lock also a uh, also a, a demco design and that all comes together in this knife with great ergonomics and a stout steel look at the steel on this thing it's thick and chunky but wickedly sharp I think I'm going to do a wardrobe change today. I think I'm going to start carrying this today. I haven't carried this in a little while. And man, it is awesome. It is a great knife. And I'm very lucky to have this. Uh, a, a guy who used to be here a bit, Lavender Pants, hooked me up with this. Um, he was at River's Edge Cutlery and gave me a, sent me a text. I know you want an 8020. I'm here with six of them. Do you want me to pick one up for you? And that was, that was a very cool knife moment uh, there. Lavender Pants, I hope you're doing well, sir. Next up is also a uh, um, Andrew Demko knife, but this one uses his famous triad lock, and this is the, the Cold Steel AD-10. Yes, I have a large Cold Steel collection, and yes, many to most of them have uh, of the folders have the triad lock. So I could have chosen uh, from a lot of different knives, but this one to me is what really... Um, this is the one that really jumped out to me because uh, the other ones are, are are bigger and stouter. I thought about maybe the um, the Formax Scout, uh, but this just comes together with the XHP blade, the hollow ground blade. So this is the very first run of AD tens because it had the X eight. Oh, this is the S thirty five. I take it back, but it did. It does have the hollow grind, which you only saw in the first one, and this incredibly um, comfortable contoured full sized uh, G ten handle. Uh, with with the triad lock just just uh, engenders that's not the right word um, just inspires confidence also not for nothing but these can be very fidgety triad lock knives can be very very fidgety they're all designed with a ricasso that can bump off of your forefinger so when you drop it it's not cutting you it's it's taking you right to the uh, right to the ricasso. Uh, very thick liners on this, that triad lock, that that very um, useful blade shape, the the contouring and ergonomics. Um, this is just a great knife, and I would definitely uh, um, test my life to it. Also, by the way, this has a nice little uh, aluminum arched noggin knocker there that uh, works well if you need to use it in reverse grip, though this isn't a very reverse grippy kind of knife. All right, last up in this list of knives uh, folders I would trust my life on is the Spartan Harzi folder. Spartan Harzi folder to me feels with its wide standoffs, it's thick slabs of non weight relieved titanium. Um, it's very nice tolerances. It reminds me of the love child of the Sabenza and the hinderer XM series. Uh, to me, this, this has a, uh, a lot of the, the best qualities of both of those. And when I look at this knife from the spine, I get I get a nice feeling. because <laughs> I like how thick the slabs are, but I also like how close together they are. Um, it's not a it's not a very slender knife. This is also a three point uh, or about a point six inch wide knife. Uh, but the thickness of the slabs and the closeness of them, they are literally the width of the blade. Well. I was going to say the width of the blade plus the washers. And I guess that's the case in every case. But when you do it exactly right, it feels like nothing else. And this one has a hydraulic feel like this. 
hydraulic, meaning there's resistance the whole way, but it's totally smooth and light resistance. Um, whereas a knife like this has that drop shut, drop shut action. Uh, this has the hydraulic action. So this, this here, um, with the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Spartan Harzi folder to me is uh, kind of the ultimate expression of all of these knives. And not just because it has my logo on it, but that has something to do with it. Uh, but just in terms of stout, sturdy, um, never any blade play, always, uh, just always good to go. Uh, this is the knife, I think, that I put at the top of the heap. And recently, having someone else who's not as familiar uh, with knives, really pick this one out of a bunch and be like, yeah, this is the one I would take. And this is a guy who who knows and has relied on weapons to survive. And this was this was the knife that uh, that he pulled, and that really made me think. And uh, so yeah, I love all of these knives. And you know, they say the knife on you is the best knife. So I would stake my life with any of these if I had to. Anything I have here, um, but hopefully, if I ever needed one in a in a situation. Uh, where my life depended on it, I'd have one of these. All right, thanks for joining me. Uh, let me know what your knife is. And I'm talking folders right now. We have a lot of fixed blades that that could do the trick, but not every folder could. So let me know uh, down below what folder you would uh, you would bet your life on. All right, uh, be sure to join us on Sunday for a great interview show. And tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives, we will be giving away a knife. I haven't determined what that will be yet. Uh, but we'll be giving away a knife on Thursday Night Knives, as we will for some time, as Dave has given me, man, the mother load of giveaway knives. So very excited about that. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.